Hi there Wargamers, Austin here with Deathray Designs and today we're going to be painting one of the new Warhammer 40k compatible ship hull base inserts. We've got it temporarily mounted to the top of one of our mini grips, we've sanded it lightly and used some black spray primer. First thing that we're going to do is use our airbrush to coat the entire base in white. Now you may ask why would we prime it in black if we're just going to spray it white? Well, the reason is that we want to keep black down in all of those uh, little engraved lines. It's going to give you better contrast overall if you leave those black. And to that end, I'm actually spraying it at a fairly shallow angle here just so that you don't get droplets of paint uh, spraying down into the, the cracks. So I'm trying to keep it almost level with the base as I rotate it around. Next I'm using just a little bit of Minotaur bark and going right around the edge just so that we've got a nice bright hot spot in the middle. Then using an organic stencil, we're taking some Agrax Earthshade loaded into the airbrush and just spritzing it over the whole thing. And that way we get this nice grunge pattern over the entire base. Makes it look a little bit dirty and worn and you can see those splotches there on the side. Up next we're going to use some frisket film. For those of you who haven't ever used frisket film before, it's just a thin, uh, transparent, sticky-backed film that you can use for masking. Uh, it's like one step up from masking tape. You can always use masking tape for this part of the process, but I like this because you can see right through it and see right where the lines are. Up next, use your X-Acto knife or utility cutter to cut along the lines right through the frisket film and this way we can peel away pieces of the frisket film and use our airbrush to just paint certain sections of the base. This will end up giving you great clean lines and you won't have to worry about accidentally over brushing onto an area next to where you meant to get the paint uh, or spend tons and tons of time with masking tape though it can be done with masking tape instead of frisket film. So there you see we've got some of the sections exposed and we're going to be doing those in black but first we're going to start with a base coat of gray because we don't want it all to be perfectly black we want to have a little bit of transition there so we're using just a, a medium gray and then next we're going to load the airbrush up with black and come back in and coat most of it but focusing on the edges so right there along the edge in that little pie shaped piece up top we're going to leave a corner of gray towards the middle and then we're going to do the same thing for this longer section focusing mostly on the outside and leaving the parts towards the interior more gray and once you're done just peel the frisket film off and you've got nice clean edges so satisfying so up next we're going to put another piece of frisket film back down because now we're going to do some red sections. So we're going to pick a couple of sections on this base and we're going to do the same process again. We're going to cut through the frisket film. And the great thing about using the acrylic bases is that these grooves are deep enough that they actually guide your knife really well and you end up with clean, smooth, flat lines every time. Even if you're doing curved lines, it's super helpful for this kind of process. So we're going to use some angelic red from Minotaur and we're trying to make sure that we get all of the, the interiors of some of these cut throughs just so they don't we don't leave any white or gray or off color areas down in those recesses. We want it to make it look like uh, it's, it's actually made of this red material or just been painted all the way down in it. Up next we're going to switch over to a darker color. We're going to use a bloodstained mud also from Minotaur and we're just going to try to bring this red down just a little bit. Mostly focusing on the edges. Now once we've peeled off the film I'm using a ghost tint brown also Minotaur to go around the edge and uh, darken everything down so that we get a nice hot bright spot in the middle and I'm just going to use a the edge of a business card here to mask off this little corner so that we get a little bit of extra definition between these two uh, white beige plates together so you can see that there. And that's uh, pretty much it for the basic paint job so now we're going to do a little bit of weathering and to do that we're going to make ourselves a little tool. I've taken a little pinch of open cell foam this is the kind of foam that you'd get in like a, a pluck foam uh, case for your miniatures I'm taking a little um, shish kebab skewer, put a little glue on the end of it, 
and attaching that little nodule of foam to the end. Sort of rolling it between my fingers to get that glue to set. So now we've got this tiny little sort of foam cotton bud. And I've loaded it up with Reaper Dark Shadow paint because I love this stuff for chipping. I think it just is so simple and looks really good every time. Um, and we're going to very carefully sort of dab it into the corners of places, places where we think that um, paint would get chipped up most easily, so around some of these holes and maybe a little scuff right there in the middle of the surface. You don't want to keep it exclusively towards only the edges of plates. Um, I think that you get a more convincing look this way. So wherever you think you need a little bit of, of chipping and weathering, uh, just go ahead and, and carefully dab on a little bit. Up next we're going to use some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to go over some of these spots so that it looks like um, the places where the paint's chipped away and started rusting, we've got a little bit of uh, rust water sort of washing all over the place. And if you want to, you can add a little bit of extra color with uh, some yellow or orange washes um, just to make it look like there's some other kind of corrosive liquid there. And that's pretty much it for this base. All you got to do is affix it down to your standard Games Workshop base and you are ready to mount a miniature to it. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and share. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure to do that. Hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime we release new videos. And if you, like many of us, are putting together a new 40k army with the release of 8th edition, make sure to check out these bases over on our site, deathraydesigns.com. We've got lots of designs and lots of different sizes, so check them out. I'm sure we've got something for you. Thanks as always, guys, and until next time, happy wargaming.